I am about to head to the airport to go to Marrakesh, Morocco, solo. A new country for me and a new continent. I've heard a lot of mixed fins about going there solo as a woman, but I have also seen a lot of women um, online record their journeys, traveling there solo. So I thought I'd do the same and you know, I've done my research. I think I will be okay, I guess we'll see. <laughs> You'd like to think I will be. Um, it just feels a bit odd to me that I am checking in a suitcase and I'm only going for four nights because I always travel light. Like I have done much longer trips in just like a carry-on four to liter backpack that you put in the overhead lockers. Um, but we all know I'm probably gonna do some damage in the sooks in Marrakesh because I feel like Marrakesh is one of those destinations where, you know, it's acceptable to spend quite a few hours of your trip <laughs> shopping. I somehow miraculously made it here safely. This has got to have been one of the most um, crazy arrivals I've had in a destination. And I don't want to start this video off so negatively because I know it is safe here just from the research I've done. And just like, just I sat next to um, a couple, an older couple on the plane and who had been to Morocco before. And they were like, the woman was like, yeah, Marrakesh is safe, that Morocco is safe, like if my, she told me that if her 22 year old daughter said she was going to go to Marrakesh solo she would not worry about it at all um, so I'm like yeah great but my flight was delayed firstly which is never great um, and then when I got here this the passport control queue was crazy and then I get there and I never check in a bag I never, literally, I'm always like trying to travel late because I have this constant fear and this anxiety that I'm going to lose my luggage. It's just going to get lost. But because I wanted to buy stuff, I decided to check one in and I get there. And I can't even see any BA flights on the list of baggage claim. And the baggage claims only start from arrivals at eight, even though my flight arrived before eight. But I just spent like over an hour in passport control. <laughs> So I asked some random, you know, policemen at the airport, what do I do, where do I ask for help? And he pointed me in the right direction, so I started just going in the direction looking for this office he told me about, he didn't tell me the name of. And I just, by chance, <laughs> spotted my bag going around on a random carousel that, you know, it had a number, but did not have the name of the flight up crazy and then yeah I had to wait for a while for my shuttle and they were just like my bit of advice that I've learned so far is if you stay in a Riyadh in Marrakesh and you want to organize some sort of transfer to your accommodations so that you know that you know your arrival is going to be safe is that you maybe book through the Riyadh so they know exactly where they're going to drop you off don't book a Kit when you're booking your flights and adding on like I booked a package holiday with BA that didn't even include um, a shuttle and then I just added it on with BA. Don't do that because I was just waiting forever to get to the bloody shuttle which turned out they were just saying like oh more people more people we're waiting for more people um, and then it was literally just me and one other again older couple um, <laughs> who had been on the same flight as me and the thing is, a lot of the cars, vehicles can't go down the Medina, so the guy just dropped me off somewhere, I didn't know where it was, and was like, yeah, walk that way, but he didn't really know he was using my maps. Um, so I just followed my maps, even though I knew I'd heard things about maps not being the best in the Medina, because it can't tell you always what street you're on. But the thing is, the hotel was in a different location on the maps to where it actually was, so I got to a random place where there was no Riyadh. But before I even got there, a man had already, you know, I, I actually said to the guy beforehand, I was speaking French to the driver, I was like, Je suis toute seule. Je ne peux pas promener toute seule dans la nuit avec une va valise. C'est très clair. 
could just be un touriste. Like, I'm just, just, I don't like to look like a target. I mean, I'm gonna look like a tourist anyway, but you know, I mean, a white girl walking through the streets with Marrakesh with a suitcase, looking at maps on her phone. Of course I still had like a sore thumb. <laughs> And I was alone, so of course I was an easy target. There's a man who was trying to get money off of me, and I knew he would give me money if I wanted, you know, I knew he wanted money for directions, but in the end I just gave up and was just like, I don't care how much is it, just take me to my Riyadh. But he took me to another Riyadh, and I was like, that's not my Riyadh. But he still knocked on it. But it was a good thing he did, because the other Riyadh knew the guys in the Riyadh and just took my suitcase and walked it there for me, and was like, yeah. It's fine. You know, you'll be, you'll be, like when I got here and the guy from the reception was showing me around my Riyadh, he was lovely and was like, you seem scared, you don't need to be scared, you can literally walk out by yourself at 3am, but I was like, mm, I'm not going to do that. It's just, I always have this rule, you know, don't go out by yourself alone at night. So the fact that I ended up getting dropped off somewhere in the middle of nowhere by night with a big suitcase, just when I was already stressed, not good, but <laughs> I realise I've been rambling on for ages and I'm already setting like a bad impression of Marrakesh and I feel like when I walk around by myself during the day I will feel safe. But yeah, my Riyadh room is so cute. So this is a room for one person, so it's like a single room, but come on, this is definitely a double bed. It's just mm -hmm. not like a kin or queen bed like you usually get in hotels. Um, but let me turn around and show you. Oh, so I have this little desk um, and I was so thirsty when I got here so this was a lifesaver although I have got a new life straw bottle so I probably could fill up from the sink and should I really be safe if the life straw bottle works um, my shower's so cute this is the mirror yeah just like small little room but this is all I need for four days and I can't wait <laughs> for breakfast um on top of the rooftop in the morning and I'm sorry for the random for the round ball I'm just stressed and I think my mom's gonna have a heart attack when she watches this and she's gonna say Sophie never go to work or basically anywhere solo again but yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. So, um, off to a better start this morning. I just want to clarify that the stress and anxiety I was feeling last night, I would have felt if the same thing had happened to me anywhere. Like, I rarely ever walk alone at night traveling. Like, it goes against my rules. And if I do, it's only somewhere where I know the area already. I don't have to look at my maps and I know the area is safe and I know there's gonna be other people around. Like when I spent two months in Peru and I was teaching English at a school in the evening and it would finish at night. So I would have to walk at night, but I knew that there was people along the route non-stop and I knew where I was going and I felt completely safe. So yeah, it's just stress, but up on the rooftop now for breakfast and it's so beautiful I've already befriended a cat apparently they come to the hotel for food and the cat has run away now uh, but yeah I've got my Moroccan mint tea and I was asked if I wanted anything specific for breakfast I was like no just 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 bring me a Moroccan breakfast like I just want to know what a Moroccan breakfast is um, so yeah I'm gonna eat that and then um, the guy I spoke to at reception yesterday he was lovely and he said he'll show me to the mosque um, so and he'll call my tour later and make sure they pick me up from the mosque because the place they're picking me up from on the maps like I can see it's not where my Riyadh is um, because obviously there's some issue with maps but I've checked and Google Maps knows exactly where my Riyadh is because when I search for my Riyadh on Google Maps I can see that I'm there but when I search for my Riyadh on Apple Maps I can see it's a six minute walk away wherever the hell I ended up going last night and getting lost so um, Google Maps I think is going to be 
the map that I use here. Um, but yeah, just gonna enjoy the breakfast and the views from here. You can see the mosque behind me. Um, and I'll update you all later. So as you can see, I took my first morning in Marrakesh nice and easy and just took in all of the incredible views that the rooftop of my Riyadh had to offer. I was staying in the Casa, Casper and Spa Riyadh by the way and I absolutely loved it, would recommend. They don't know I'm making this video. Well maybe the guy that caught me vlogging on the rooftop could have assumed that but yeah, the rest of them don't. Anyway, then eventually I did leave and went literally five minutes by foot to the Sadian, Sadian tombs, sorry if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. Hello again everyone, so I'm currently in the Badi Palace. Um, there's a few palaces here. I know there's the Bahia Palace, which I hope to visit at some point, and I feel like I have to because my room in my Riyadh is actually named after it. But this palace, the Badi Palace, is just beautiful, as you can see. There's a little pelicans up on top of like, the palace. And I'm in such a good mood now, like this morning, walking around. Like I have felt safe. Um, Google Maps um, seems to be working better. Like it took me to the tombs by myself and it took me to where I got dropped off last night. I recognized the cafe and it was not that far from my Riyadh at all. Just Apple Maps sent me the wrong way. So I'll definitely be using Google Maps to get back to the Riyadh. And I've taken pictures of things along my way to that cafe that, I'll reckon, that I can recognize and look out for. So, you know, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think I'll have problems. Um, getting back today um, but yeah walking around during the day it's fine there just was one point on where Google Maps sent me the wrong way again trying to go to Badi Palace it was saying to keep going down a road that was clearly closed and um, no longer in use or private but there was a couple of other um, tourists clearly going the same way and a man just said no it's that way and he just walked off and we didn't even say we we're going to the palace but he obviously knew we could go that way and yeah, which I just went that way, he didn't ask for no money, I, and I just kind of refreshed um, Google Maps, and, you know, I could see that I was starting to go the right way, I was like, right, I'm just going to have to go a longer way, like, do a loop, and that's what Google Maps actually suggested as well, so, yeah, just don't always trust Google Maps, but, like, walking around, I think walking around the centre of town, you know, during the day, as a woman, should be fine, I think it was just... I think I just had a bit of a panic attack last night for no reason, just because I was put out of my comfort zone when I wasn't expecting to be put out of my comfort zone. Like, I wanted to walk around Morocco by myself during the day first to become, you know, aware of my surroundings. But I didn't get that opportunity. I was just shoved straight into the hustle and bustle whilst I was dehydrated. Um, because I've been stuck in a long queue at the um, passport control and hadn't found anywhere to buy a bottle of water and I was stuck waiting to get to the hotel, the Riyadh for ages and I was just dehydrated, I had a headache, you know, and I was just not expecting to be put in that situation so I just panicked and my anxiety has been quite worse for these last couple of months to be fair so I'm not surprised that I did panic. Um, maybe people that have travelled more often and been in those situations before would not panic as much as I did but I think it's normal that I panicked. I don't know but yeah so far I do feel safe here so I just want to clarify that because I feel like I may have put some people off of potentially coming here just by what I said last night but like what I said earlier that you know I could go to a country such as Germany where I used to live and I feel very comfortable there very safe there and I, I feel like I can blend in there because I'm obviously very European looking and I can speak German you know when I open my mouth they'll realize I'm not and start speaking they'll realize I'm not German but I can speak German but if you stop me in a new city that I hadn't been to before in Germany in the, at 10pm at night and I, could I, and I got lost and maps were sending me the wrong way I would also panic so it's yeah nothing to do with like 
here. <laughs> So as you can see, the Badi Palace has such a cool feel to it. I absolutely love this palace. I was able to see wild storks in their nests. I got some amazing photos on my camera and there is a small exhibition part to the palace as well. However, I will say there was no information in English. Luckily, I was able to read the French, but just bear that in mind. Um, after leaving the palace, I headed for some lunch at the popular Café de Peace on their rooftop. One, two, three. <laughs> Later on that afternoon, I headed on a tour to the Agafe Desert, which is a rocky desert unlike the sandy desert of the Sahara, which can also be found in Morocco and a few other countries. Um, however, this desert is a lot closer to Marrakesh and is only a one hour drive. Now I did not get enough footage from this trip, but hopefully gives you an insight of what the tour was like and all tours that I went on during this trip can be found linked below in the description box. Hello again everyone. So I've come to some waterfalls for the day, also waterfalls. Um, I put this tour on Get Your Guide from Marrakesh and I'll warn you, it is a really long drive. So left, got picked up from the main square at 20 past eight, got here at 12. <laughs> but it's worth it because there's a waterfall and there's monkeys. And yeah, we're still gonna go to a lot of other people and um, go on a boat ride as well, which will take us right into the waterfall. So I think that's gonna be the most exciting part. Yeah, <laughs> I'll show you the monkeys in a bit and hopefully they won't stop my camera. So our tour guide was telling us that these waterfalls are the second biggest in Africa and we saw the waterfalls from so many different angles we started at the top we went down we went across on the on the boats incredible experience had a local guide from the village befriended stray dogs got food included it was it was great great fun I'm glad I decided to go on the tour because I was debating not going as I only had three days in Marrakesh and the tour takes a whole day in itself like you spend like four hours just traveling there from Marrakesh um but so worth it and yeah I would recommend especially if you do have more time in Marrakesh hello again everyone so I'm back from my tour to the Bazood waterfalls Honestly, I think that tour was a lot better value for money than the one that I did in the Agafé Desert yesterday. Also, the tour guide was so helpful. Not that I didn't like my tour guide yesterday. She did her job of getting us everywhere, but she didn't really explain much. Where today, we actually had a tour guide from the village where the waterfalls were. So he was able to give us so much information and he um, was multilingual, so switching between English and French um, to communicate with everyone on the tour. There was a lot of French people on my tour. Um, there are a lot of French people here in Morocco um, come across. Just heard a little girl running across the rooftop a minute ago in my Riyadh um, speaking French to uh, her mum. So yeah, basically I'm on my, my uh, the rooftop of my Riyadh. I kind of gave that away already. Um, deciding because it's been a long day it makes sense to have dinner here and I feel like I haven't really just spent time at the Riyadh and enjoyed being here. I've picked this really nice Riyadh, I've treated myself to this nice Riyadh and I haven't really spent much time here because I think that's often the way when you're traveling somewhere right you go out and you do all these things and you visit all these nice places but yeah I wish I had booked one extra day here just so I could have like a bit more time at the Riyadh and a bit more time to see stuff and realizing that I'm probably not going to go to Le Jardin Montreal, I'm probably not going to go to the Secret Garden or the um, what's it called, the, 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 the big school. Um, I haven't even done everything in the area around my Riyadh, I still need to do the Bahia Palace. Um, 
and I'm not sure if I'm gonna get time to do that tomorrow because I have my tour of the six in the morning. I decided to book a tour of the six just because um, I heard that people get lost in the six a lot and that Google Maps doesn't really always work in the six and you know being my first time here I didn't really know what to expect and I just you know hearing that a lot ugh. as I was saying hearing that a lot obviously made me a bit concerned you know being here alone as a woman I don't really want to be getting lost so I thought I would book a tour and because I know I want to do a lot of shopping I splashed out I booked a private tour I've never booked a private tour of anything like what happened to the Sophie who used to get buses all the way from London to Paris because she didn't want to spend the money on the Eurostar or the flight I only actually remember taking a 14 euro bus to Paris and my ticket to London Victoria at the time because I was living in Essex at the time was more expensive than the bus <laughs> crazy um but yeah i've ordered some vegetable couscous um seven vegetable couscous it said some olives and homemade lemonade so I'm very excited to try that and i'm just enjoying being on the the riyadh rooftop i've seen the sunset already i've heard the evening call for prayer um it's just really pleasant here but i'm wondering if the lights are going to come on because they were on a minute ago and they just switched off so yeah <laughs> when the um, guy working here comes back I'll ask about the lights because I think it's going to get dark soon and I kind of want to be able to see what I'm eating. <laughs> So as you can see, eventually I did make it to the Bahia Palace. It was a lot more crowded than the Badi Palace. I don't know if that's because it was more popular or because on this occasion I went later in the day so it was a busier time or maybe a combination of the two. But yeah, it was just a bit hard to try and get like photographs without other people in the background and definitely had to queue at one point to get photographs but yeah it was incredibly beautiful I'm glad I went I did feel like my time there was very rushed though and I was there for an hour because I had to get back to my Riyadh for my Moroccan hammer and experience and then yeah I spent some time up on the rooftop one last time I'm headed out for dinner at another rooftop called Casper Cafe and that was really good too 
Good morning everyone, it is now sadly time for me to leave Marrakesh. All in all, I did feel safe here traveling alone as a woman, even just like walking around at night. Um, I didn't do it too much, but um, some of the tours that I went on got me back um, to the city center after, you know, once it was dark, but I found it fine walking around then at night because I knew where I was going. Um, yeah, I just had that one hiccup at the beginning. Um, because I didn't know where I was going so I would just say um, you know if you come to Morocco and you are arriving at night or you're arriving in Marrakesh and I maybe book your transfer through um, your Riyadh because then they should know where you're getting dropped off so worst comes to worst then you get a bit lost surely you can retrace your steps and then phone them and be like what is the way from the drop-off point or um yeah just don't panic as well <laughs> and if one map sent you the wrong way try the other one and see if it's also sending you telling you to go that way before you panic because google maps was telling me to go the right way and apple maps wasn't but yeah on the whole here i felt really safe and i would come back again alone um or with friends it depends <laughs> um but yeah i would come back there's still a lot of things i need to do in marrakesh that i missed out a lot of the major attractions i missed out and i would love to go see more of the country like go to chef chavon i think i'm pronouncing it incorrectly um, but yes and maybe to go to the coast as well and the sandy desert not <laughs> the rocky desert of agave next time okay if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up as it really helps me out and click that big red subscribe button down below and turn on that notification bell so that you never miss a video and i hope to see you in the next one bye